Hello, Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, bear with me. Um, so, we are starting in just a podunk, middle of nowhere town. Um, you all are off to your respective destinations. Um, you guys are essentially strangers. You do not know each other, and you've all gathered onto this train platform because you have managed... Um, to hear through the grapevine, through the villagers, that um, a tavern is traveling through, a safe passage, essentially, to get to wherever you need to go, for whatever reasonings you need to go there. Um, this tavern is the safest way to travel through these parts, also known as the Railway Tavern, a um, artifice-engineered train. Um, that is said to be of legend that goes anywhere across this this world underwater through tunnels it is a marvel and you guys have been lucky enough to come upon this town and to be able to catch on this railway so um as you guys are gathered on this platform you kind of get a glimpse of each other and i'd like you guys to go ahead and introduce yourselves so we're going to start um with uh let's go with uh, Sid, go ahead and introduce your character. They've just walked on. Um, there was really no place to buy tickets, by the way. You guys kind of just, it, it was just an empty train station. They kind of went out for lunch, you know, for early dinner, um, technically. Um, and you've walked onto the platform. You're the first one there. What mm. do we see? So what you see is a tall lithe gentleman in Regency-esque clothing, uh, toned to purples and navy blues, and a dashing red cape. He himself is rather pale, with uh, white hair, and he uh, just kind of adjusts his glasses and kind of takes in what's around him. It is quite a marvel of train. Very interesting. He is going to look for, like, if I were to, I don't know, need to sneak around on the train. Where's a good place to get on the train so well, that maybe no one can see me? But Well, the train's not quite there yet. It's, oh. You guys are waiting at the empty station. I apologize. It's I didn't an clarify. empty station. I'm dreaming of a train. <laughs> I bet you it's gorgeous. I've heard many marvelous things about this train. But um, I d could probably serve to purchase a ticket or, I don't know, steal one. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Uh, but he is going to just kind of, he's going to look for a, a place that's not covered in dust to maybe sit down. Uh, but he's, he's definitely like, kind of like brushing dust off of his trousers and making sure he's not too dirty. Okay, fantastic. As there are a couple benches nearby, it it seems to be the station is just empty at the moment. Again, the, the ticket vendors have, have gone for an early dinner. The train's not quite there yet. Uh, it, it is early evening. The sun has not yet begun to set. Um, and uh, Beth, your character is next to come on to the platform, having heard that this, uh, this uh, railway is going the way you need to. Um, what does uh, Derek see? Uh, Derek would see uh, what appears to be average size elf uh, with short pinkish dark pink hair. Um, there's laurels in her hair. She's very dressed, very spring-like. Um, she's kind of just kind of taking it all in. Um, walking with a Skip on our step. Just kind of bemused. Okay. Lovely. Um, and do you do you try to approach? Do you kind of hang back? Just. Um, she's going to hang back just a little bit. Just kind of debating whether or not to pull out her viola. Okay. And play. Lovely. Um. So then. Uh. Um, as the, as, you know, time passes, very short amount of time, uh, we have, um, Austin's character. Go ahead and, as you hurry on, hoping you didn't miss the train, uh, what do the others see? All right, so, 
you see a six foot six tall copper dragonborn, um, like rippling muscles, a uh, bunch of scars kind of all over his body. He's got a half sleeve tattoo. It's kind of just like looks like a claw kind of reaching down around his right arm. Um, has a very like stoic expression on his face. He's just kind of like looking around, trying to assess the situation, look for danger, that kind of thing. He's been um, a mercenary for a really long time, but he's traveling to this new place because he's left that life behind. He's going to be a bodyguard for uh, someone that he ended up saving back in the day. Um, so I think he's probably just going to like stand kind of in the middle, just keep an eye out. All right, lovely. And um, finally, as uh, the sun kind of um, starts to turn an amber hue, the sky is kind of taking on pinks and purples. Um, we have uh, Zach's character who uh, arrives having heard of their good fortune to that the train is passing by. Um, so you see kind of scurry up on the platform, um, this tall... Um, very thickly built um, female half orc. Um, she's got like a very dark gray skin tone, um, as opposed to the typical green, uh, which is pretty typical in the area. Um, she has like very vivid violet colored hair, um, and her eyes burn with like red embers. Um, she looks around very shiftily and doesn't seem to want to approach directly. Um, and it seems almost as if on cue, um, when this uh, last uh, person uh, steps onto the platform, that you hear uh, the sound of a train whistle um, in the distance. And you hear it long before you see two plumes of smoke coming toward you. And that's even before you actually start to hear the rumble of this massive train. Um, and if you look down, uh, down the tracks, uh, you, you see this opulent shimmering train just approaching at full speed. This thing is massive. This is probably one of the biggest trains that you have seen um, in your travels. Um, uh, and it is absolutely gilded in golds and silvers as it, uh, it, it, it goes on past the platform uh, and you hear the screeching as it starts to break. Um, and you see train car after train car after train car as it rolls to a stop, just um, massive doors and just beautiful bright colors. Um, and you, you're kind of getting an idea of why it's famous. Um, and as it uh, finalizes to a halt, um, the doors to the train car in front of you uh, open, and a uh, high elf um, opens the, the the door and kind of uh, starts to welcome you. Um, welcome, welcome to the Railway Tavern. Come on in. Come on. Come, come, come. Mm -hmm. uh, you can purchase your tickets on inside, but come on before it gets too dark out here. Um, and so with that, you guys are ushered into the train. Um, Please let me know if you guys see your characters, if you guys can move them. Um, it is a very long map, and I apologize in advance. Zoom, 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 zoom. Here we go. Zoom. It's the left, the front, or the right? Huh? Oh, we're in the middle, I see. In the middle. Yeah. I see it now. Thank you. All right. Cannot move. We, we've been ushered in. Um, as we're being ushered, can I... And Geetha is just gonna. Can I even afford the tickets? Um, uh, the high elf is, is gonna kind of chuckle. Um, my sir, we, we can't. Um, my, my sorry, I'm trying to figure something out. You All can't right. move, Beth. Nope. I got you. Hold on. Me either. Same. But you can move, Sid. Yes. All right, we're going to do the following. Drag and drop your characters, because apparently I did not do this properly for everybody but Sid, and I don't know what I did for Zid. There we go. I'm just right. special. Let me... 
They look so much like me. They must be an imposter. <laughs> All right, everybody can move now. Is everybody okay with moving? Yep. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, okay. Um, to to your question, uh, Zach. Uh, sorry. Uh, Etha. Stop, Etha. Thank you. Um, uh, the the high elf kind of uh, chuckles. Um, my good ma'am, uh, we have different accommodations for all types of travelers. Um, our young ticket master here, Miss Prim, will be more than happy to find accommodations that uh, will work within your budget. And um, standing next to this high elf, who is obviously is very well dressed, he looks like the conductor um, with his little hat, his little watch, the little you know jacket, and all that. And standing next to him is a very short, equally well dressed little goblin she looks like a doll she looks adorable finely dressed little heels and she's holding a what seems to be almost like a, a a ticket creator and a little cashier thing it's like slung around her neck um she's seems really ready to go and she's kind of looking up um at you Geetha, and she uh holds out her hand and goes no ticket we have a variety of options and um she's kind of addressing the whole group um, as she's she's kind of realized y'all don't have tickets. Um, and give me five seconds. I have this written over here. Thank you very much. Um, she uh, she's gonna open a little notepad and go. <clears throat> Sing our single rooms are ten gold a night. Our double rooms are fifteen gold a night. Our rooms our double rooms with a bathroom are twenty gold a night. And our private first class suites are forty gold a night. Hmm. Hmm. Who would like to buy their ticket first? <laughs> so Derek would like to consider. Uh, do we know about how long our trips are supposed to be? Um. So yes. Uh. So a couple of you guys knows that you are going to um be here about maybe four days uh, to get to your respective destinations at the minimum. Um, do you, do you have something less than 10 gold a night? Uh, Prim is going to sigh. If you do not have enough money on you at the moment, there are ways to earn money on board of the railway. We okay. have a, a quest board over in our silver coin, which is our dining gallery. Um, in which you can earn more gold through assisting us and guests on board. There's also the gambling car where you can try your luck. Seeing you your better, situation. So, so you say 15 gold for bathroom? It is, um, no, it is 20 gold for a private bathroom. All, both the single and the doubles have shared bathrooms. What's the difference between a single and a double? I'm confused. Um, she she's gonna <laughs> sigh and look at the conductor. Um, and he's gonna very chip or very happily explain. Well, you see, good, good ma'am, our single rooms are a single uh twin bed with a chest and just uh you know mere accommodations. The double is a little bigger. You've got a chair. You've got a wardrobe. A double bed, bigger for bigger guests. I am a bigger guest. <laughs> ah, yes. I will need but, a double. Um, uh, Prim is going to go ahead and nod, and um, she's going to hold out her hand for your coin. That'll be 15 a night. All right, here you are. Pays 15. Uh, she is going to go ahead, take your money, uh, feed it through her little machine, and out pops a little ticket that prints out. Like, chick, 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 chick. She's going to punch it and give it to you. In the morning, I'll revisit you, and you can purchase your next ticket for the next day uh, at that time. Perfect. You go day by day. That is A-OK. -okay. The whole goal is to get away. Thank you. Very welcome. Please enjoy. Um... It, she is going to look now at Nyx, who is directly in front of her. <laughs> I'll and do this. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I'll do a single. That'll work for me. Alrighty. And she goes ahead, same thing. Chuk, 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 chuk. Gives out your ticket, punches it, and hands it back to you. Um, and, and um, 
she goes ahead and takes the next person, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, Derek. So Derek is actually going to look at our tall dragonborn friend like, and just kind of like gently touch the arm and be like, oh, well, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I mean, we could, uh, you know, save a little bit of money and maybe uh, share a room. <laughs> just an offer. You can say no. Listen. I've got no idea who you are. Well, you could get to know me. I in a fashion, uh, in a way, maybe. I think I'm okay. Um, ah, fine. Uh, I'm, maybe tomorrow. I'm used to I'm used to sleeping on a bedroll on the dirt, so I'm I'm not any like I'm not too worried. I could show you the finer things. He kind of tilts his head. Um. <laughs> no. You know you're supposed he to snaps use his fingers. fingers. Better luck know. next time. I'll take a single, please. Alrighty, and um, you hand over your ten gold, and again, chuk, 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 and she hands it right on back to you. Um, and uh, she does. This is this is like a two and a half foot goblin looking up at this massive dragonborn just holding out her hand. And you, sir? I'll take a single little one. Right away. And then... Um, and she punches it and hands you the ticket and she looks at everyone. Um, your rooms will be shown to you by the head of the quarters whenever you're ready to take your accommodations. Till then, please feel free to explore the train. Um, and she is going to point uh, to the area they're currently in. This is the bar car, the Copper Penny. Um, we have drinks and food and uh, live entertainment. If you continue on that way, and she is uh, going to point this way. You can find the gambling car, um, the, uh, the gold coin, and uh, the silver dollar, which is our dining car. And you can find your rooms. Um, you will be... Hold on, um, because you're going to be assigned your train cars now. So, uh, Etha, you'll be in the Sapphire car. Uh, Eric, you'll be in the Ruby car. Nix, Sapphire car. And Derek, Ruby. Marvelous. Um, if at any point you wish to retire early, please just let one of our mini porters know they're in every single one of our cars. Or you can let myself or our uh, owner and conductor uh, tomorrow here know. And the little elf is just gonna, gonna wave. I'm so happy to have all of you here on board. Welcome, welcome. Um, and as he says that, uh, he is gonna stick his head out and yell, um, <laughs> I don't want to yell it, but let me Wait, all aboard <laughs> and um you can hear the train whistling and kind of waiting to see if there are any stragglers it appears there is not any um and he closes the door and you feel um a slight lurch as the train begins to move forward um on this journey um and you guys are free to move about and do what you'd like hmm I think Derek would like to adventure to the gambling train. All right, certainly. Um, as uh, and in this train, particularly, um, just to describe it real fast, I'm so sorry. So now that you know you don't have to deal with little Prim anymore, um, you notice that this uh, car is opulent. Like it is, um, it's well loved, well worn. It seems to be the most popular car. Um, don't want to put a million NPCs, but it is a busy car. There are quite a few people drinking and chatting. Um, and uh, right here by the piano, playing just very lulling kind of jazz, um, like Baby Be Mine, uh, St. James Infirmary Blues, like that that kind of soft jazz um, is what seems to be an elven uh, singer. Um, and very enchanting, very beautiful. Um, and behind the bar, there seems to be a half-elf with flaming hair um who seems 
mildly annoyed <laughs> um, at just having to fulfill orders and whatnot. Um, and that is your current surroundings. Just let me know where you go. You guys are free to go wherever you'd like. Um, just give me a heads up. So. Well, if I want to live in comfort for the rest of this trip, I definitely need to do a little bit of gambling. Because right, so. <laughs> labor? <laughs> Manual labor? No. <laughs> no. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to the quest board. Okay. Um, so uh, there are porters at the end of every um, train car. So you can ask them for directions and whatnot if you're not sure uh, where you need to be or things like that. Um, uh, I'm just putting NPCs over in the gambling car real fast. Uh, because if you're going to gamble, this is going to get interesting. Um, but yeah, you guys feel free to move. Uh, what are you going to do, Nix and uh, Geetha? Um, so there's people around presently. Yes. Um, the half elf person is, or the the tall one who seems to be in charge, is who is next to me on the map. Yeah. The high elf. Yes. Yes. Okay. I want to talk to her. Okay. Uh, he. Um, Him. We'll have... Sorry. It's okay. Um, he is just seeming to just be very happy, just kind of watching you guys. Um, um, when you approach, um, ah, yes. Uh, how can I help you, ma'am? Uh, yes. Um, if I were to look for wrong man, where would I go? Ah, well, we have. Uh, do you need assistance with your bags? Oh no, not bags. Uh just just can you point me in the direction of strong men? Well, we have a couple if you require men to help you with thing, uh, to lug things, our porters are more than happy and um I believe our head porter is uh down uh in the uh in the baggage car helping load up uh our current shipment with our engineer. So it would be all the way down at the end of the train. Yeah, yeah, that sounds perfect. He is who I want. Where can right. I find? All the uh, just continue on all the way to the end of the train. Um, oh, okay. You can find them uh, loading point. in the stocks. And let me go do that. Um, so let's cut over to Nix. Nix, what are you doing, dear? Um, she's heading over to the bar. Okay. Uh, and you're walking right up to the bar just to speak with the bartender? Yeah. Um, he is going to kind of look at you and be like, what do you want? Well, what is there to have, sweetheart? <sighs> We've got all manner of wines, meads, and ales. And our uh, menu... Give me a second. I'm going to add the menu. Um, uh, here we go. I'm adding the menu right now uh, so that you can peruse it. Uh, I apologize. Um, you're asking just for the cocktail menu, correct? Sure. Yeah. All right. And he hands you uh, a uh, a laminated uh, menu. You should be able to see it now in handouts. Um, a laminated uh, menu. Um, and it's got uh, different cocktails. And they apparently are based on the bartender's mood. <laughs> um, uh, so um, as you look over the menu, he currently, he, he kind of... Um, uh, tells you that um, at the moment what I got on hand to make is the bugbear. All right, that sounds like sounds like a good good way to start. 
pay him the gold. And he is going to go ahead and mix you up the drink, and he's going to slide it over to you um, and return to uh, taking uh, other drinks and fulfilling orders. And he kind of, he's kind of eyeing you like, you're going to be here long? Possibly. I'm not sure just yet. Just need to know so I can memorize a face that returns to the bar is all. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Not really. They pay me for this. Doesn't mean you can't have any fun. Mm. <laughs> he's, he's, he's going to turn his back to you and just go back, like, make himself busy with the bottles behind the bar. He, <laughs> But for some reason, the other patrons at the bar, which seem to be women, are kind of fawning over this very, like, angry, like, attractive-looking half-elf for some odd reason. It's um, not the only drink at the bar. <laughs> Essentially. Let's see. And the gambling car is ready if you'd like to go over there, Derek. Um, of course. Uh, and Garrick, you're heading over to the uh, to the quest board, correct? Hmm? Uh, Garrick is he heading over to the quest board, correct? Do we have very similar names? Oh, yeah, Garrick. Yeah. Oh, no, Garrick and Derek. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, I know, I'm Derek going gambling. I'm not going to the quest board. <laughs> no, I know. I know you're going gambling. Uh, but I just, I wanted to, I don't know if Austin can hear me. Um. Are you yes. going to the, the quest board? Yes. So are you walking with Derek as you do it? Because you have to go through the gambling car to get to the, <laughs> the dining. Oh, yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> well. Okay. So um, as you guys walk into the uh, gold coin, this place is absolutely fucking blinding. Everything is just opulently decorated in golds like the setting sun is hitting right through the windows and the room is shimmering like nice. people are losing and winning money in style here like absolutely and you can hear various like shouts of like winds um over here i, I please don't make or NPCs, but over here you've got like two people playing chess. Over here it looks like somebody's playing a card game. Over here it looks like they're playing for money though. And over here it looks like they're playing a weird game with like little figures and dice and uh, <laughs> and they all seem to be kind of acting and very immersed in what they're doing. <laughs> uh, only I find that funny. Um and um, there, this table seems to be kind of empty, same as this one. Um, but this one seems to be where money is being made. Um, and it, it looks like this is a glass cabinet that seems to have a variety of games. Um, from board games to checkers to go fish to puzzles. Just things to entertain people, um, essentially. Hmm. Uh, I would like to make my way over to the empty chair next to the gambling table. Um, and I'm going to, like, gently touch the chair and gesture to the table. Do you mind if I join you? Um, the uh, dealer who is uh, who looks like one of the railway employees, he's a high elf, which, hold on, I do not have him. Um, I'm just gonna be this person this is my my employee um they're going to nod and they're gonna be like the buy-in is eight eight gold marvelous and he's going to to tap the eight gold on the table okay um so we're going to go ahead 
and we are going to do a let me look at your stats real quick We're going to go ahead and do, um, they're playing poker. Is that fine? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I would like you to roll me a charisma at a disadvantage. Disadvantage? Yes. Well, I got a... Seven. Okay. Hmm. Um, it seems uh, that um, at, as the game goes on, these two, they seem to have good hands at this one and this one at first seem to have good hands. And so did you. Um, but when all the cards were laid down on the table, uh, this gentleman took the entirety of the pot. Hmm. Um, very boisterously is laughing, like, ha ha ha, another one for me tonight, lads. Um, and he's just, you know, very boisterous, kind of looking at you, who has just lost eight coin. Want to play again, eh, lad? Now, what kind of player would I be if I did not try again? Throw on the table, then. Mm-hmm, another eight. And uh, go ahead and roll me. Uh, you know what? Let's. Yeah, it's uh, charisma at a disadvantage. Well, now, remember, you can do other things to try and bolster your chances. But at the moment. Well, I am a little bit curious. Why disadvantage? Why don't you go ahead and. Um, are it, it is your character curious why disadvantage? Well, I mean, my character would not know. <laughs> yeah, but as but, a player, um, I'm curious. I can't say much right now. All right. Um, I would like to observe my fellow players a little bit closer. Okay. Um. Then I'd like you to do a perception. Twenty-five. Beautiful. Um, as you kind of watch, um, you kind of notice that uh, the person across from you and the person to the uh, left, they look kind of desperate. They look like this, like that they need to win to survive. Like they, they look desperate to win. But the gentleman to the right, <laughs> he looks like. Like, this is nothing. He's a couple beers in. This man is just... Yeah. And, um... The... the um, You're only looking at the players, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, the gentleman to the right, he just looks really nonchalant. Like, this... This has no worry. But, um... With that role, you don't notice anything funny. Um... As um, as you guys are dealt with your new set of cards. Hmm. Okay. And would you like to play again, or? Well, yes, of course. All right, so it'll be again at disadvantage. And he still seems calm. Yes. Hey, Tim. Yes. So I kind of stuck around to kind of watch this. Okay. I was Can wondering I... if you were going to keep going because I was going to cut to you, but um, go for it. Yeah, for, for right now, I'm kind of just standing watching because the weird little guy who was trying to sleep in bed with me uh, is doing something. So c can I do like a general perception check on like the whole table to see what's going on? Oh, certainly. And this is including our, my dealer? This is, yeah, everybody. Beautiful. Thank you. He's, he's been... Um, gambling on you know like mercenary tent stuff like that so he's used to people like pulling shenanigans okay 
Um, so go ahead and uh, give me a perception. 21. Okay, lovely. Um, so you kind of, again, see um, at, at this gentleman right here, whose name you have not caught yet. Um, he seems relaxed, cool as a cucumber. He ain't got no care in the world, bare necessities and all that BS. Um, these two are in tears this young lady is even more so she's kind of like in poker you're supposed to you know you know kind of bluff she has lost all ability to do so she is just looking at her cards trying not to cry now the dealer is where it's a little interesting he's kind of standing there he looks kind of serious um and he's kind of staring down this gentleman he seems like his eyes are narrow, kind of suspicious. Um, but in terms of him, you don't see anything out of the ordinary um, with how he's playing. What I would like to do uh, before I make my next play is... B before you roll for the play? Yes. Yes, I would like to use a psionic power called Psychic Whispers. As okay. an action, choose up to three creatures you can see and then roll one psionic energy die, 1d8. For a number of hours, hours equal to the number rolled, the chosen creatures can speak telepathically with you, and you can speak telepathically with them, as long as you are within one mile. You and the creature don't need to speak a common language to understand one another, and I am going to cast it on Garrick. Okay. And it's going to last for seven hours, baby! <laughs> and in your head, you hear... Hey, Garrick, um, what's in that man's hands? Something kinky is going on. So <laughs> you see Garrick jump about a foot in the air. Um, what? 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 Shh, quiet. Oh. No, 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 no. Don't. Don't draw attention to this. This is fine. This is fine. Just something a little under the table. Come on. Come on. Help a fellow How high out. Do you jump. About a foot in the air. Okay. Um You're not trying to be stealthy at all. So um you're gonna oh, draw no. a couple <laughs> You're you're drawing a couple looks from the table behind you that's like playing goldfish and like Kind of wondering, like, what the fuck is this man doing just jumping out of nowhere? You're getting funny looks, my friend. <laughs> oh, that's totally fine. Um, it just... In in his head, he's gonna be like, uh, he Hello? Um, Hi. Can, the, who... like, darling, please, just one moment of your time. What cards are in that man's hand? Um... No need to say it out loud, out loud or anything. Just like, think on it real hard. Like, just, just show me the picture. What's in it for me? <laughs> oh. Drinks. Good enough. Marvelous. So I guess I'll try to stealthily take a peek at this dude's cards. I don't know that you okay. even need to stealthily. You just stand behind him. No. But I, no, I... no, you said stealthily. It's great. I need a stealth, my dear. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm looming. That. <laughs> What's in your hand, little man? <laughs> and then uh, once once I get that, is it okay if I jump to someone else? Are oh, we yes. alright if we put a pin in it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I... <laughs> Rolled a 12. Okay. Give what, me is, a what is this game you guys are playing? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I'm going to see. I have to roll several die. Hold on. Because <laughs> there's a whole train of people. <laughs> what did you roll again? 12? Yes. Um... <laughs> As you approach uh, the blonde, uh, saggy, uh, shaggy-haired uh, visitor, uh, kind of, as you get closer, and, and you as well, um, um, oh god, Derek, uh, he, he's got sandy blonde hair, he's got beautiful watery blue eyes, um, it, he's got a scar that runs across his forehead. Um, he, he almost looks, uh, surprise he's looks he's very charming and 
his smile is massive. But as he kind of feels you approach, he kind of folds his cards towards his chest and kind of looks back at you because he can feel your looming shadow. You can wait your turn, lad. You can play after this one loses his money to me. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. I didn't know what you guys were playing. Um, yeah, the, um, the, uh, dealer, uh, uh kind of nods to you and it's like, they're playing poker for money, sir. I'm just supervising and dealing out the cards. Um, and with that, I'm going to quickly put a pin in it and I would like to jump over to, um, uh, Etha. Which direction did Etha, you, you have made it all the way to the baggage car uh, where you see um, a um, middle-aged uh, red-haired uh, man and a actually um, beardless dwarf uh, lugging uh, supplies and kind of organizing them. Um, it kind of, uh, are you trying to stealthily come up to them or are you just approaching uh, no. them? Just walk it up. Um, they kind of pause what they're doing, kind of look at you, and the uh, the dwarf uh, kind of gives you a, a, a slight bow and goes, Ah, uh, oh, hold on, I found him. Ah, my lady, uh, no likes of, this is no place for guests, how can we help? It looks like you're removing heavy things, yes? Uh, we are indeed, miss. Let me show you how to move heavy things properly. Um, so they're, like, moving box stuff, right? Yes. Supplies for the bar, the kitchen, so on and so forth. And they're, like, putting it on shelves and stuff, in a way? Uh, yes. In, um, kind of, like, little areas kind of neatly arranged. Okay. Um, so she's actually going to use kind of her hip to bud over this guy out of the way. And pick up what he was about to pick up in, in place of him. Okay. Um... You see, you lift with legs first. Um, and she's going to pick up whatever it is. Do you need me to roll for it or however that works? Um, um, is it a large box or a small box? Um, it's a medium-sized box. Let's go ahead and Very give cool. me a strength roll, please. Okay, cool. Um, so that's an 11. <laughs> uh, you pick it up. You you do pick it up. It is a, a slightly heavy. Um, you hear clinking uh, from the inside, um, uh, but you are able to pick it up. But it's a little heavier than what you expected. Contents don't matter. Proper form matter. Um, yeah, the the dwarf that you you know hipped out of the way is kind of like looking a little flabbergasted, like. Miss, miss, there's no need. We we have plenty of, of people who work here who who move the stuff for you. Yes, but proper moving of stuff is important. You don't want a workers' comp complaint coming through, no? <laughs> uh, th this gentleman over here looks hella content to just let you do what you want. He's kind of leaning, and he is so amused. Yeah, we ain't want no workers' comp on us, do we? Well, you let the passengers carry the heavy if they lift with their legs first. Huh. There's a concept that the passengers do our work. Uh, and the, the dwarf is going to kind of shake his head and be like, Miss, please, we, we've got this all taken care of. Why, why don't you go? I can show you to your room. I can... Take you to the observatory where you, you can, can relax. do this. You can do what I just did. <laughs> I would like you. You are to... small. Can you reach the top shelf? <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to roll me a persuade. <laughs> it's a nat 20. Ooh, beautiful. Um, so he kind of looks at her and kind of indignant and goes, 
I'm a dwarf. Of course I can lift things. I know how to move things around. And he is going to do what she asked. Um, and he, he is going to lift the boxes, like, you know, proper form. And um, put them up on the shelf. Um, and this this gentleman is just laughing. Just hella amused. That was good for him. How about you and I get a drink later? Uh, the, the dwarf's kind of, kind of, wipe off his hands, fix his little suit. Um, uh, I mean, I don't mind getting a drink later after my shift last. Um, my name's Kogan. Kogan Hamfist. Your name? Githa. No last name. Githa. Well... I can appreciate a woman who knows how to carry things. <laughs> um, and um, he's going to kind of eye her. Um, and do me a favor, roll me a charisma. <laughs> Four. Mm. That's, uh, that's all right. Um, he's going to kind of look at you and be like, if you're heading over to the bar... Uh, the bartender, he, uh, he kind of hates it when people say that he looks sloppy. Just avoid doing that unless you, you want a different type of drink, you know? Uh, so I'll meet you there later. <laughs> something different. Okay, got there. Yes, I will see you there soon, little man. <laughs> he, he's gonna kind of nod, and this <laughs> This one kind of lights a cigarette and just like, damn, smoothest way to get a date. I'm off to work the engine. Bye. <laughs> and uh, he is going to stalk off. Um, and then you're making your way back to the bar then? Yep. All right. Um, then I'm going to jump over to Nyx. Nyx, my dear. And we're scrolling. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> Nix, you're still at the bar, right? Yep. Well, um, the singer uh, kind of uh, kind of ends her song set, um, and the piano is magically playing on its own, actually. This whole time, the piano's just been, you know, kind of doing its thing. Um, and she kind of uh, walks on over to the bar and pours herself a, a glass of water and kind of looks at you and is like, how are you enjoying the ride so far? It's spectacular. Oh, I also got her voice wrong. That's my bad. But um, she's going to kind of nod and be like, well, you're a new face. Is this your first time at the railway? Yes, it is. Well, welcome on board. We're very glad to have you, aren't we, Ravio? Um, you can hear uh, the bartender kind of grumble, and uh, you've now unlocked that his name is Rabio. Um, uh, but he kind of grumbles and ignores the pair of you. Um, um, Nix is going to turn, be like, you said Rabio, right? Yeah. Rabio, such a classy name. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't wear it out unless you actually need something. Um, and the uh, the the elven woman next to you uh, offers out her hand. I'm Verity. If you'd like to know, and you can ignore him. He's a he's a bit of a sourpuss. The ladies certainly seem to like him. <laughs> I mean, he's rather our shining star here at the Copper Penny. Um. And uh, his mood improves if you tip well, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they all? <laughs> so where are you headed? Oh, I'm running an errand for a friend. Well, I hope your friend appreciates it. This this um, train ain't cheap to be on. Yeah. But I got it handled. <laughs> well, I do commend you to 
stay stick around and keep listening to my sets, but um, we do have plenty of other cars for you to explore. Our caboose, for example, has a gorgeous observatory, and seeing as the sun's setting and the stars are coming out, plenty of people go up there just to see if there are any fallen stars. Hmm, I'll have to go take a look. Thank you for letting me know. No problem at all, darling. Um, and you can count on me as a friend. I can help you around or tell you who to avoid. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep that in, I will keep that in mind. My name is Nix, by the way. It is a pleasure to meet you, Nix. Um, do you play any music at all? Oh, I play on. Nix is going to kind of gesture to where she's got her viola on her. I dabble here and there. Well, why don't you join me for this next set? I can share some of the coin I earn. Sure, I'd be delighted to help. <laughs> um, And she's going to kind of uh, get up and walk over back to the piano. And I'd like you to roll a performance for me. All right, performance. 17. Okay, lovely. Um, so you are keeping pace with Verity. It is not spectacular, but it's not bad. You're actually playing very, very well. Um, and people are kind of clapping and cheering as you kind of freestyle along with Verity. And she's she's kind of chill with it. She's kind of apparently magically direct directing the piano. To kind of fit the rhythm that you're laying down. All right. Um, and then I'm going to put a singular pin in it, if that's all right. Works for me. And we're going to jump back to the gambling car. Uh, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. What are y'all doing? Well, I'm very sure that this person is cheating. Well, Garrick, did you see anything? This is all what mental, correct? Have? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Just clarifying. <laughs> Garrick thinks really, like, very loudly. Uh, no, I think he caught on. <laughs> you can see gonna... Derek physic like, just a little twitch, because he's so loud. <laughs> no need to <laughs> yell. I'm... I'm gonna go... All right, fine. <laughs> um, I so do you play? See. I want to, but I'm very sure that this man is cheating. Nobody isn't at least a little nervous. Hmm, but I don't have any spill. It's just a tarot cube, but that's not cool. <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? Uh, no. I'll I'll roll this time. Okay. It's advantage. Hey, Pringles. That's cool. Thanks. Eight. I'm really not Ooh, playing boy. cards today. Um, so you, you had a lousy hand from the beginning. Like you, you were pretty sure you weren't going to win this round, uh, because you never had a good hand to start with. Um, and as you, uh, kind of fold and again, uh, these two try their chances and he takes the pot again. So you've lost another eight gold. And he's kind of very boisterously like, ha ha ha! Ah, another lucky hand, eh? I'm not quite sure that luck has anything to do with it, but mm -hmm. sure. I mean, if you ain't feeling lucky, lad, you can get out the game. Hmm. So will you stay or will you go? Yeah. 
I think I'm gonna go. Okay. There's no point in staying at a rigged table. You say that out loud? Oh, yes. Um, I just feel like the, the sport isn't here. The, so I'll um, find it elsewhere. The, um, the gentleman in the blonde nothing rigged here and he's gonna hold up his hands you know roll up his sleeves show there's no cards there uh railway don't allow no cheat and strict policies just i run the luck. if you don't mind i'd like to double check and while i am doing this i would like to try and plant cards on him okay I am going, <sighs> this is what I'm going to do. I would like an investigation. Because what are you checking? Are you like well, looking I'm just at gonna like, yeah, just gonna him? Yeah, I'm just going to be like, mm, don't mind if I check. Okay. Um, no one's first... this lucky. So first I'm going to have you roll me an investigation. Stop sucking. Um, 16. Okay. With that, you can tell there really is no cards up this man's sleeves. There is nothing funny in his hands. No false fingers. No no nothing. No cards. Um, now, you want to plant cards on him while his sleeves are rolled up? I mean, it'd be a fun card trick now, wouldn't it? I am going to have you do a sleight of hand. 20, but it's dirty. Okay. Um, so you go ahead and you um, take some of the cards that were on the table and you, you know, as you're quote unquote inspecting him to, to make sure that you see no cards, um, you manage to slip one of them into his rolled up sleeve. Mm. Um, however, the dealer does catch you. The dealer does see it, but the dealer says nothing. Well, well, well. You were saying, like I said, no one has that much luck. And he's going to like flip the card in his face. Um, the... The man's going to kind of look at him and kind of raise a brow because, you know, it's kind of did it in his face, too. He kind of saw you do it. Um, and he he's going to let you look at the table. Okay, uh, did he see it or did he not? Because that's two very different things. He, man, you put a card in his sleeve. He did see it. Dealer saw it as well. The other two. Okay, did not so I see did it. not pass the check then. You did not pass the check for two people. <sighs> I'm gonna misty step into the next car. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The check was high. But two of yeah, them. Yeah, I'm just gonna it. misty step right back. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Ugh. All right, I'm going to put a pin in you. I'm sorry. And I'm going to go over to Garrick. Uh, Garrick, you've walked into the, uh, the uh, silver dollar. Um, everything is decorated opulently in, um, in blues and sapphires and rich royal blues. Um, over here, it's the kitchen and a small halfling girl uh, woman is running around at incredible speed on a rolling uh, stepladder, um, chopping in a human-sized kitchen. It's it's quite the display. Um, and she seems to be, you know, filling out orders for all the guests that are in here, as well as throughout the rest of the train, uh, along with two other little halfling sous chefs uh, that are uh, behind her. Um, the uh, quest board... Uh, seems to be uh, right over here. Um, uh, and 
you approach it, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you see a couple different things there. You see um, undercover help needed. Uh, discretion is a must. See Cohen Hamfist for details. Help wanted. See Prim. Um, if you've a weapon handy and don't mind getting your hands dirty, see the engineer. Better yet, know some spells. And finally, courier needed for simple delivery job. Please see Ditron La Muera in the Sapphire car. Okay. Um, not exactly inconspicuous, so not interested in the over undercover one. Uh, don't know any spells. <laughs> um, but I don't mind getting my blade dirty, so how important is the magic to this? That's, you're going to have to go talk to the engineer. Yes, I know. I was talking to myself. Um, oh, okay, sorry. I, <laughs> I'll, I'll to, just take the one um, for Prim and the one for the engineer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Welcome sorry. back. Just, just hello. You, hello. I, I said I'll take the one for Prim and the engineer. Okay, uh, you can only take one at a time, so which one would you like to do first? I'll do the prim one. Okay. Um, so you will have to go find prim. Um, will you ask a porter, or will you go walking? Um, I'll probably ask somebody. Okay. Um, a, um, a porter will probably tell you that Prim is off doing her rounds, that she should be around soon and just to just hang out around the bar car or even here um, to catch her. Okay. Then I guess I'll wait. We're going to put just a small pin in that, and we're going to jump over to, um, uh, uh, Etha. What are you yes. doing here? I am at the bar waiting for my new man. <laughs> um, your new man, ironically enough, does come through the door, um, and he gives you a little wave, but he actually approaches Derek. Um, um, excuse me, sir? Yes? Um, may I speak with you a moment? You're speaking with me now? Yes, but uh, a little quieter. Um, and he You're kind of offers to me, you to And, come like, over. he'll whisper, you're speaking to me now? Um, he's, uh, gonna kind of whisper, um, I see that you, you believe that somebody was cheating in the gambling car. There is no way someone has that much luck at a gambling game. I, I agree with you entirely, um, but, um, I believe someone is cheating in the gambling car. I need some undercover help with this, and discretion is an absolute must. You see, we oh don't want God. to falsely accuse anyone. Um, the gentleman is actually uh, filing a complaint against you. Oh, we that's have... perfectly fine. It's not going <laughs> to go anywhere. Well, actually, we can remove you from the train for it, but we aren't. Um, but I would have you, you can... know, I am testing different sets to find a set that I roll higher than a 10 and I am on set number 6 <laughs> nice. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry oh my god I'm on set number 7 <laughs> um but Kogan's gonna look at him and I be would like, love to prove that man a fraud well 
if you are able to give me proof, undeniable proof, that he is cheating, I will give you 100 gold. That's the reward. Sold. <laughs> well, I just, I need undeniable, irrevocable proof. We cannot have a scene and we cannot have, you know, false accusations. Now, what constitutes undeniable proof in this train? Oh my god. It... <laughs> Sorry, I found a set of dice. Um, I lovingly call them the cum dice because that's what they look like. But anyways, oh my god, is it the dice? I remember yes, those. Yes, it's those ones. <laughs> oh god, I hate them. <laughs> anyways. Um, so um, yes, what would your staff consider verifiable proof? Is it witness statement? Evidence. Mmm, a confession. Confession, evidence, any of the like. Um, All right. I can get a confession. All right, see that you do, lad. You'll excuse me. Just return to me when you're done. Will do. And I would like you to know that actually fills out one of the quest board uh, things. Um, he is going to approach you, Geetha. Kind of a tip his hat, um, miss. I'm not quite off a, off duty, but I figured I can buy your drink ahead of time. And a gentleman too. Um, uh, what what would you like to drink, lad? Less. Uh, something hot and spicy. Ah, uh, hold on. Uh. Hot and spicy, you say. <laughs> One moment. Um, all right, here we go. Um, he is um, going to kind of look at um, uh, Ravio. And uh, he's going to be like, Lad, this place is an absolute mess. What, what's this shite that you're serving guests now? And look at you. Your clothes are a mess and your hair's your hair's not getting any more calm. And um, at that, you can see Ravio starts getting agitated and angrier. And his hair actually gets longer. The flames get bigger. And he kind of, like, growls and kind of, you know, gets kind of angry at, at Kogan. Shut the fuck up, you dwarf. I don't need to hear this shit from you. You're lugging boxes all day. The, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> and very angry. He's he's pretty angry at this point. Um, and um, um, he's kind of fuming. He you can kind of feel the heat coming off of him. Um, and Kogan puts down uh ten gold pieces. Um. Because at this point, he knows how angry, how, how to kind of gauge his anger. Um, and um, he, 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 you know, signals to you and goes, um, Alas, it's like a, one of the flame and hairy eyeballs. Hot and spicy, eh? And um, <laughs> Ravio flicks him off, but he takes the money and does begin to make the drink. Um, now, this drink is served in a highball glass, and it has an illusion, an illusionary, unblinking, flaming eyeball hovering over it that, sears to, that seems to stare straight into the soul of the drinker. It is mm. hot, and it is spicy. It contains clear spirits, pepper syrup, and uh, some of Ravio's special spirits. Um, now, are you going to go ahead and drink it? I sure am. This thing looks great. Um, I am going to need you to roll a constitution check. Okay, I have given you a 15. Beautiful. You pass, so you're good. Um, you are going to receive a plus three in AC, um, and this is going to last you... One second... For five hours. Okay. So, um, Hogan's gonna kind of tap the bar and kind of smile up at you and be like, uh, I need to get, get over to the, the guests that need assistance. 
But uh, I hope you enjoy, lads. Um, before you go, um, mm. is there work I can do to assist you? Maybe to make a little scratch while I'm on board this train here? At the moment, no, not yet, miss. I, I mean, I've cast I mean, the lifting gen- boxes properly and things of that nature. Sadly, no less, but I did task that gentleman over there with trying to help me find um cheater over in the gambling car. You're welcome to I assist. Know nothing of that. Do you do you know anyone who needs uh magic help? Um I do actually. The engineer's been looking for some magic users that can fight. Um it'll take more than one of you. The task is rather grand. And who is this person? Um, is the gentleman with the red hair that was laughing at me (laughs) earlier in in the baggage car? Um, okay, I will seek him out. Um, you said, but I can't do it alone. No, it's too grand of an operation. You will need help less. If you look at me, you will see I can do it alone. But I will Mm. seek help first. I'd like you to come back aboard the train after the task. It'd be a shame if you weren't. If I meet your uh, cabin and I'll assure him I return. <laughs> he, he's gonna he's gonna blush very heavily, um, but he's gonna, you know, tip his, his little hat and he is going to continue on um uh out mm-hmm. of the cabin to go uh, assist other guests. At this point, uh the sun has set um and um it is getting quite dark people are starting to you know get their uh nightcaps in uh they are starting to um some people, are... Begun. <laughs> some people are turning in for the night others are grabbing dinner um uh nix can i have one more performance check please all right 12 Okay, um, so as your set comes to an end, uh, having shared the stage with uh, Verity, um, give me a second, I... Oh, shit, nat 20. All right, so you're going to get more than I thought. Um, you're going to get um, eight pieces of gold uh, that she's going to split with you. Um, so you've gained eight pieces by playing music with her. Nice. Um, and she's going to kind of smile and be like, well, Sha, I've, I've got to go on over to the and freshen up a bit before the late night set. Um, why don't you go ahead and enjoy yourself? There's the observatory down that way. And, of course, the dining car and right here in the bar car. Just um, avoid Ravio. He seems to have been irked. Yeah, it appears so. He's kind of cute when he's angry. I know, right? Oh, he's just to die for. But, um, I I will say this. Um, hold on. I'm so sorry. There's a lot to keep track of. Um, uh, I will say this. Just to make sure there isn't a full-on brawl like last week. Make sure nobody's smoking any pipe in here. All right? All right. Sounds like a plan. She's going to kind of wink and pat your shoulder, and she's going to kind of um, walk away and walk out of the car, kind of go to her room to, to freshen up. Um, um, and then what would you do next? Um, I think Nix is just kind of kind of... um. Probably make sure, like, Curviola is all put away in its proper spot. Um, count the change that she got, the gold that she got, and, you know, obviously keep an eye out and make sure Brawl doesn't start. But kind okay. of just amuse people watching. Okay. And um, she just finished playing, yeah? Yeah. Yes, she did. But, like, while I was talking with Hogan? A little after, as he was walking away, they were finishing their set. Okay, so I could have heard it. 
them. Yes. Beautiful. I would like to just casually like tell Nix how wonderful their music was. Over. Oh, thank you. It reminds me of when I was little. Oh. I was oh, little once. I imagine everybody's little at least once. <laughs> Sometimes more than once if you piss off the wrong fay, but you know. <laughs> Do you have weapons other than your beautiful ability of music? Why do you need to know? I am taking a job and I could use a, a body to throw in front of me if I get attacked. I mean, a comrade in arms, comrade. Um, can I, who, can I see Derek at, well, <laughs> Or if, who, can I see random people? Yeah, there are the people around them. There there are people around you. There are a couple girls sitting at the bar, ogling at the very pissed off bartender. A couple people are telling stories, kind of drinking around here. Um, I just don't want to put so many NPC tokens. Oh. Can I see Derek as well? Um, Considering, I mean, Derek, are you trying to be sneaky? No. And <laughs> I'm yes, pouting him. at a table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I feel really bad. So, um, oh, don't worry. Nick... I'll get him back, <laughs> and not in a nice way. So Nyx is gonna place her hand on Gita's shoulder and be like, "Well, I don't oh. think I'd make a very good human sh humanoid shield. That little fella in the corner might be what we're <gasps> looking for." <sighs> Ooh, our meat shields. Yes, lead the way. All right. <laughs> Ooh, I mean. Mm. He's kind of sitting in, in the chair, legs slightly crossed, uh, hand on his chin, when both of you loom up near him and he just kind of looks, looks up, looks down, looks up, looks up, up again and looks across at you and just can I help you? The day has just begun. Why so down? Well, you see, I tried my hand at a game that I'm very familiar with and yet it seems that Lady Luck has uh, left me in the dust. But you see, the thing is, is Lady Luck and I are very well acquainted, and I'm very sure that this gentleman was cheating. Can you say? Yes. The the one with the dead trees. Dead trees? No. Well, I suppose it depends on what the cards are made out of. But in this case, yes, I suppose dead trees. What an evil game. I mean, not that I care. <clears throat> All right. You can just say you don't like poker. But I've been tasked with proving that the gentleman is, in fact, cheating. And I will get a confession. Now, whether or not it's <laughs> true, I don't even care. That sounds rather fun. Are you planning on doing that this eve? Oh god, yes. Can't do it now, he's still playing cards. Well, if it's a he, why is it called poker, not poking? Well, it's poke-er? No H. Poke-er. Um, ah, the more you know. Yes. Do you know how to lift boxes? Um, I suppose, but it's not like a hobby of mine. Is this, are we having a regular conversation or do you need something? I'm looking for 
um, the word allies, 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 allies. 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 Your yes. grasp of common is amazing. Thank you, thank you. I think, yes, thank yes, you. Yes, that is a thank you. What do you need an ally for? I, um, as you can see by my outfit, I um, am a warlock and therefore cannot be close to enemies and there is a chance there will be enemies so i need allies <sighs> that's okay. a lot nicer than how you describe it to me she literally puts her finger up like that and just like shushes you <laughs> <laughs> what i'm going to do next is uh telepathically i'm gonna go oh garrick <laughs> Darling, oh, 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 since God. we're a little bit connected at the brain, uh, there are two very lovely ladies here that have a job that I think you might just be perfect for. How, how long is this going to last? Oh, not too much longer. <laughs> just okay. about another I, I six hours. Jumping. Oh, you'll get used to it eventually, darling. I don't... I don't want to. Um, I guess I've been standing here, so I've kind of heard this conversation. You guys need some oh, you were right there! <laughs> I didn't see you because of my three little blips. <laughs> so all of a sudden, Derek stops talking and just thinking, bedroom eyes over at the track. <laughs> So, uh, you need me to break someone's legs? Like, what, what, what do you need? Is this out loud or telepathically still? Oh, no, this is, yeah. this is out loud. It's kind of like in and out because he's really confused about what's going on. He's like, yeah. Yeah, so, sorry, th this one is like in oh, my no, head you're for fine. some reason. No, I can think of worse places to be. Like I can think of better places to be. And <laughs> he's going to like have a little glance at Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Garrick is just going to think about the most gruesome mental image from his mercenary days that he can just like blood and gore and nastiness Ooh. just to like calm down if you don't want to see more do, I, do what if I don't want to see more calm um, down <laughs> fine <laughs> I don't know if breaking of legs is necessary. However, it may be. We I could do it just scary. for fun. <laughs> we Garrick looks out a really train. hearty, really hearty laugh. Just oh, oh those were the days. <laughs> um, I've gotta go talk to the little one. Um, but yeah, let me know if you need me to like break some shit. That's fine. You just gotta well, me. Sounds like we're all in. Well, I've already met the person. Man. I just have to meet him again. Lead the way. <sighs> Alright. So, Good as way. you guys head over to Good go see way. the engineer, um, <laughs> Prim is speaking with the conductor. She kind of pauses uh, when you uh, approach uh, Garrick. Um, can I help you? Uh, yes. He hello, little one. Um, did I, My name I, is there was... Prim. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Or you can Ms. call Prim. me Knuckles. Knuckles. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like the cut of your jib, girl. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> Knuckles, um, I saw on the quest board you need some help. Yes, I do. I do. Um, see, I'm really, I'm really good at being the bouncer for the tavern. Um, but um, I can't punch what I can't see. So um, I think 
we have a stowaway, and I, I, I run a tight ship. I don't appreciate uh, knowing that there might be a stowaway on board, and I would rather it not you know, found out, so I need a little discretion. I've looked for the train over and over and over, and I can't find them, but I need to find them before, you know, word gets out that, you know, people can just sneak on and get away with it, you know. <laughs> um, so I need you to find this person so I can punch the ever-living shit out of them. Oh. <laughs> it's 200 gold if you can solve this mystery for me. I like it. Can I break the legs first? Only if you call me first. <laughs> you got it. Do you, do you have any leads or a place to start? No, not really. Just as you're walking around, just keep your eyes out. For anybody that looks like they don't quite ex uh, belong or, you know, things going missing where they shouldn't. <laughs> I know someone who doesn't belong. You can jump like me like that. <laughs> But if you need any help getting to certain parts of the train, just let me know, all right? All right, sounds good. Hey, and she, she like, uh, punches her little hand, and you can see she's got, like, a set of, like, brass knuckles. Um, and I'd like you to roll an, um, an arcana check for me. Oh, yeah, because I'm great with arcana. <clears throat> I'm really sorry. <laughs> Actually, that is a natural 19. Hey! Nice. You know what? I can accept this. Um, You can tell that there's something a little magical about these brass knuckles. Um, at a, uh, They seem, and they also seem to be attuned to her, but that's about all you can get from that. Um, mm -hmm. But you can tell that they're special. Um, and there's something about them. Hmm. Cool. Good to know. Um, I, I give her like I, I like hold out my like huge hand to do like the forearm handshake with her. Um, she will uh, shake your hand on the hand that doesn't have the the knuckles at the moment, um, and she's kind of smiling up at you. Hmm. Um. All right, let me know if you need assistance to get to your room or with this endeavor. I appreciate it. All right, I'll let you know what I find. And she nods and she goes back to the, the conductor who the whole time was like, Oh my, a stowaway. Oh, prim. <laughs> Problem Have child. Max from Maximilian Pegasus vibes? He I'm really does. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's like Yuki, my boy. <laughs> oh, Prim, my girl. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess I'll start making my way back. But as I'm going, I'm kind of like sizing up everybody that I'm passing. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, give me a quick second. You're moving in between cars, right? Yeah, I I saw the guys leave, so I'm gonna or the girls leave. I'm gonna head back towards where they were heading. Okay. Um. And um. Are you doing the same, Derek? Yes. Okay. So everyone. And as following... I pass this table, I'm go. I would like to just closely observe Cheater McCheaterton's. Okay. Uh. You know what? Let's. You wanna. You wanna watch it, right? You know how when you walk by something and you just, like, look, but, like, you keep walking because you don't want them to know that you're looking? Okay. Um, give me a perception. Dirty 20. Lovely. Um, you see that this man is still winning. Absolutely still winning. Mm. And it seems unnatural. It really does. You are correct. Something about this seems unnatural, almost magical. It is magical. How can they have money left to lose? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They're well, negative. Then if multi millionaires are broke now. 
Uh, yep. <laughs> but that that is what you catch on your um your quick perception that you know mm -hmm. he's still fucking winning and it seems so um this lady right here yeah are they she's playing go fish, she's playing go fish? <clears throat> she's playing go fish with the three other npcs i did not want to put on the board right um excuse me ma'am one moment of your time uh y y yes sir you see i myself am not um blessed in the arcane arts would you happen to know anybody on this train who might be able to cast detect magic <laughs> uh, I, i'm not quite sure I'm, i mean you could talk to the conductor i suppose that i could uh either of you two i mean like it, this would just be so quick um the the people, the other two guests that are with her seem to be just really common folk. They just don't seem very adventuring type. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One of them kind of um, offers up, um, I mean, you could try the conductor. He did some cool magic tricks when we boarded the train. Um, I mean, there's also the scary butler over in the first class. He might able to do some magic <coughs> and the blonde girl that you originally approached kind of scoffs yeah but that prick ain't gonna talk to anybody that ain't an elf fun fact and this is a little thing i read today uh the shadar kai in all aspects when needed are considered elves i know Whoa. i that's i know this. Um, Garrick, if you don't mind going ahead, I have a small little errand to run before I join the rest of you in the back. And he's, he's just um, gonna, like, saddle around back to go talk to Scary Butler Boy. Alright, um, let me put a pin in it, if mm -hmm. that's okay. For sure. Um, uh, Garrick, you're gonna go with the girls, correct? Yeah, just also trying to, like, look at everyone, see if there's anybody who doesn't belong. Okay, uh, give me a second. Um, One of these things is not like the other. One of these okay. things didn't buy a so, goddamn ticket. <laughs> I, I, I'd like you to do me a favor. Um, as you're walking in between cars, since your passive perception is not quite there, um, uh, when you're walking in between cars or eat in each car, are you stopping to look or are you just walking and kind of glancing around uh yeah no i would say i'm like because said there's a stowaway so i'm looking for like all the hidey holes they could be staying in so i'm like i'm inspecting as i'm going around okay okay uh but you're not stopping you're just continuing are you talking like the little platforms in between yes like are you like in each car are you standing and stopping um, so, for example, um, where are you right now? Are you, you're in the, the, you're in the penny, in the, the gold coin. When you go, go into the silver dollar, are you stopping to look around? Um, or are you just continuing and looking around as you walk? No, I would say like as I'm going through the cars, like I'm st like I'm kind of stopping when I walk in to kind of size up everybody that's in that car. Okay, uh, so you're gonna do that when you stop in the silver dollar, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh. So uh, the little halfling chef uh, is gonna kind of look at you since you have stopped, um, and I'd like you to roll me a perception, by the way, um, while she speaks to you. Um, so she's going to kind of 22. Oh, lovely. Uh, everybody here looks like they belong. Um, but it looks like, uh, Soman, um, is kind of looking for something. She looks a little confuzzled. Um, and she's going to kind of look at you and give a wave, but she looks like she's lost something. You you all right there? Uh, y y yeah, I'm doing all right. I just I put a loaf of bread out so I can I can serve it with these oysters for a guest, 
and I can't find the bread. Yep. That tracks. <clears throat> how, uh, how long ago did you lose the bread? I mean, it can't be more than ten minutes. But then again, we've had a dinner rush. It's, mm, it's real strange. It's mighty odd. Have you noticed anything else missing around here? Well, I did talk to Knuckles about it, and I keep having food going missing, and my stuff keeps getting moved around. And if you talk to Kogan, I think he's had some strange happenings, too. Uh, who is that? Uh, the, it's the dwarf. Oh, okay, I know. Yeah. Garrick hasn't met him yet. Oh, I apologize. I thought you had. Oh, uh, Kogan? Kogan's our head porter. He's a beardless dwarf. Uh, he's mostly over in the staff in the staff area, in the baggage car. But he, you know, makes sure all our guests are taken care of. But he's had some strange goings on too. And I could swear to you, we ain't had a family on board for the last five days. I could swear I thought I saw a kid yesterday. What'd the kid look like? I'm not quite sure. I'm too busy here to catch a good eye. But I'll let you know. Just keep your own eyes peeled, too, sir. All right. I'll, I'll let you know if I find anything. Thanks. No problem. Bye. Huh. Alrighty. So, um, we're going to jump over to the ladies. Ladies, um... You guys are going, uh, passing the staff car, and you're going into the baggage car. Yep. Um, uh, what do y'all want to do? This, uh, the gentleman, uh, in front of you is, uh, he's about middle-aged, handsome-looking, long red hair, red beard. He, he looks like he's, he, he's a laborer, without a doubt. Um, since I've already been here once before, I'm going to take the lead on this and just kind of like put my arms up as I approach and go, Chuckles, good to see you again, my friend. <laughs> uh, why, hello there, miss. <laughs> nice to, to see you back. I've come um, looking for a favor from you. Well. Mighty bold of you to ask favors without knowing a name first, darling. Your name is Chuckles. It is what I call you in my head. <laughs> I'm Brander Finton. I'm the engineer of the train. Nice to meet Grindr you, Grander Finton? Brandar Finton. Brandar Finton. My grasp of common is not what it should be. That's mighty all right. How... Can I assist you, ladies? I would like a cigarette from you. Alternatively, I hear you have work, which I have come to offer assistance. Ah. Well, he's going to offer you a, the cigarette. Not not too many questions there. Um, he, uh, he seems very charming, very attractive. Um, he looks like uh he is um uh, quite built himself. Um he's kinda kinda look at the ladies. Um I don't know if you ladies can handle it all by yourself. I mean you got oh, no, more no, than no, no, swords. No, no, no. It's okay, we have meat shields. Meat shields? Yes. He's gonna We're look at Nick. Supposedly two other fellas coming to help us. They are well, expendable, you... don't worry, don't worry. Well, you got something that ain't just swords? Oh, yes, yes, yes. We are, as you see by our clothing, warlock. Well, issue is, the fight will be for tomorrow. We're coming up on some tracks that have been radioed in that um have been infested with some rust monsters. Oh, um, easy, easy, yes. Monsters uh, are good. 
well, we need to take care of them before they take out the track. If the yes, track is taken um, out. We can do this. Um, do you have information about rust monsters? What are they weak to? Do I crush them with my thighs or do I cast a magic spell on them? Well, I mean, magic's the best uh, type of thing against them. But actually, I'd like you both to roll a history for me to see if you guys can recall anything about rust monsters. Eleven. Okay. Seventeen. Okay, lovely. Um, Nyx. Um, you recall that, um, um, rust monsters, um, are most affected by magical weapons. Normal weapons don't deal as much damage to them. Um, okay. Uh, um, Isa, Do you recall you could take one down with your bare hands, but it would take a while. I can take them down with my bare hands, but it may take a while. <laughs> um, Grandor is going to kind of nod. Well, if, y- if y'all ladies are sure that you guys can handle this, uh, I mean, I really would feel much better if... Um, if you, a man uh, were to do this, you say? No, if you had a couple more people in a group. It ain't oh, just yes, one it's monster. Okay. It's okay. We have we have like I said, meat shells. It's good. It's good. <laughs> All right then. Well, I'll I'll send a uh, porter after you, both of y'all when we approach the tracks tomorrow. Sound fair? How much does this pay? Cause I um, am a, a woman of means, little means, and I must stay aboard this train for looks at rest two or three more days after tomorrow. Well, I got about 100 gold to split among the group, and um, he is going to reach in, he's going to step away for a minute, um, and then reappear with a sword. Um, um, I got this to offer as well. Okay, I don't want that, but maybe if Meat Shield lives through, he can have it. Um, how much is the sword worth? Um, would anybody like to roll an arc? And by the way, um, uh, Austin, your, I believe your character will have made it to the train car by now. I'm doing time right in my head. Do you want to do the checks for him as he's going through the other cars then? Uh, yes, but, um, he's not going to find anything at this current moment. Okay. That was the only, uh, the only thing that popped up. At the moment. Um, um, so the sword has just been presented and he walked into the room, yes? Yes. Okay, cool. How much is the value of the weapon? Can it be sold? Um, I rolled an... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, what did you roll, hon? Oh, I rolled an 18. 19? 18. 18? Okay. Um... Give me a quick second. Um, okay. Um, uh, he kind of shrugs. Um, I mean, I sh- I'm sure you can sell it, but I ain't got no clue what it's worth. Um, but, uh, it's a special sword. It's, uh, unless you have flame tongue, if you know what I mean. On the fire in your mouth, sounds deadly. I I couldn't quite catch that. Could you repeat that? Oh, um, sorry. I was saying that a fire on your tongue might be deadly. Uh, he he's gonna kind of chuckle. Um, I don't mind a little bit of flames. Um, but he is gonna uh put the sword at his hilt and be like. Well, it'll be a hundred gold and the sword. You can find the nearest town and see if you can sell it there. Um, tall one, I don't know your name. He was just come in near me. The tall one, the dragon. Garrick. Garrick. Um, will you 
But since you're helping, do you want the sword? And then that seems to be all there is for payment, um, is just the sword. I mean, I was standing here, he just said it's 100 gold plus the sword. <laughs> is that what he said? I had forgotten already. <laughs> we'll deal with the payment later. But we should probably work to deal with the rest so we can keep going on our train. Which is tomorrow, so we must sleep first, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't wish to sleep in this moving contraption of metal and death, but can't be helped. Um, he, he's going to kind of chuckle. Trust me, this place is safe as, as all anything. I keep it running tip top. I uh, okay. Um, he's uh, he's gonna kind of look at you and uh, semi amused, and he's gonna be like, "Well, I bid y'all a good night. I'm gonna get the train. Uh, uh, God, words. I'm gonna feed some more coal into the fires and uh." If y'all got any more questions about them rust monsters, I'm sure I can answer them tomorrow. Um, if y'all heading back to the bar, though, um, uh, I'd suggest Verity singing to talk about it with the bartender. Puts them in a better mood. Um, I'll talk about the weather. Last man who asked him that got punched through the roof. Oh. Yeah, we need to fix it. Good. Yes. Um, he's going to go ahead and he's going to go back to his private quarters and put the sword away and kind of stoke the fires. Mm. Um, so you guys are now alone in the baggage car. So we are alone in the baggage car. Who wants to rifle through things that do not belong to us? I'm going to head to my quarters. Because okay. it's going to be a long day tomorrow. I can just feel it. Oh. Yep. Um, while we're in here, because with the whole like oh. stowaway thing, if I was a stowaway, this is probably where I'd be hiding. Can I like Okay. I'm gonna like investigate all of like just do a really good look around this place. See if I see any like, you know, breadcrumbs. Okay. Anything out of place? Okay. Uh, give me a... Are you using your hands or your eyes? Um, probably my eyes at first, but if I see anything weird, I'll start, like, rummaging. Or if there looks like there's a good, like, nook or hidey place, I'll start moving stuff and looking around. Let's do a perception with advantage because okay. you're touching stuff. One second, what do I add? Uh, 21. Okay. Um, you don't see anything amiss in this car. Um, it looks just like standard storage. There's apparently, like, somebody's horse is right here, and it's happily just grazing on some hay. Like, it's it's chill. Um, but yeah, there does... There's a horse there. That's dinner. No. <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> um. But um, they um, it doesn't seem to be anything amiss in this car. Okay. Okay. All right, so where are you two headed? I'm going to hang out here for a minute after he departs. Okay. I'm um, going to go back to the train part that I didn't look at yet to look for clues. Okay. Um. So while you're heading over there, um, do you mind if I put a pin in you, Geetha? Mm-hmm, perhaps. Uh, where did... 
Uh, there we go. Eric, what you up to? I would like to find the scary elven butler. Okay, so go ahead and uh, you can ask the conductor. You can just wander. I would love to act, ask the conductor. Okay. Um, Prim has just finished her conversation with him. And uh, she is continuing to walk this way. Um, and putting her somewhere over there. This map is massive. Um, and the uh, conductor kind of waves at you. Well, hello there. How are you, my boy? Oh, fantastic. I'm having such a marvelous evening. Um, what I was wondering, uh, I am looking for something. And it's something of a magical nature. And I, I feel like the easiest way to find it would be to... Uh, Avail myself of the services of someone who might be able to cast Detect Magic. Would you know of someone with those talents? I mean, are you using it on one of our guests? Would the answer I received depend on the answer to that question? No, not really. Then yes, I'm actually conducting an investigation on behalf of one of your red-headed dwarf fellows um, and the dealer in the card room. You see, there are some suspicions of a cheater. And... Ooh. Yes, scandalous. But some um. of the observers feel that his luck is a little, shall we say, magical. Well, and so, uh, if I could find myself of someone who might be able to see such magical option, uh, objects, I might be able to prove that he's cheating. Um, uh, he, he kind of nods and kind of uh, uh, chuckles and, well, I believe that um, I can be of assistance as I know how to detect magic, my boy. Oh, marvelous. And it wouldn't even be out of place for you to be there. Oh, not at all. Let why don't we walk together? And all tell right. me. I have not had a Shatterkai on my train in eons. Ooh. Well, I'd love to tell you all about it. Uh, but first, the matter at hand. And I will describe to the conductor the game that is happening, the fact that apparently this man has won for the entire evening. And the other players are just destitute and desperate to try and win back any of their money and that the dealer is suspicious, other witnesses are suspicious, and this man is just nonplussed with his winnings. All right. So the conductor... If you don't mind, I'm going to stay back a little bit so that, you know, it seems more natural that you're there. Oh, uh, hold on, though. Let me back up then. Um, yes, but you do know that... Um... Are you doing this to assist or for coin? A bit of both. You see, I was approached with the promise of coin, but honestly, this is now a personal vendetta. Oh, because if I assist, I will be taking some of those proceeds. Only is fair. You know, my boy. Hmm. I think of... I could mm -hmm. either offer you coin, or I could tell you some more intimate details about the Shadarkai. Ah! What about their language? Is it different from Elvish? <clears throat> Not quite unlike Elvish, actually. It's more like if Sylvan had an undercommon twang. Well... I would love for us to discuss that, then, as payment. I am a, a student of languages, as you know. Ah, uh, well, let me go oh, ahead and let me me. see what I can see. Um, and so I'm going to put a quick pin in that and jump back to our other guests. Um, you guys are heading to your rooms, Nix and uh, Garrett? Yep. Um... 
I'm going to find out where my room is, but then I'm going to go investigate the rest of the train, see if I can find anything. Well, you guys are in luck. You guys are about to run into Prim. Um, so uh, you guys uh, end up seeing her um, in between the platforms. Oh, hello there. Hey, hello. Knuckles. Hey. Um, I- I'm still looking around, but uh, could you let me know where my room is just so that later I don't have to find somebody? Oh, sure. Your room is actually in this car. She is going to uh, meet you here. This is your room right here. Ah, thank you. Um, I'm heading up towards the uh, the back of the, the train. Um, do I need anything special to get in anywhere back there? Or... No, I just recommend you avoid the asshole. The asshole? Who's the asshole? Ah, uh, he's the butler in charge of our first class cabins. He doesn't really like anybody who isn't an elf. Uh, seen just, plenty of my share of those types. Yeah, just avoid him if you can. Just some advice. Got it. Thanks, Knuckles. No problem. Out, uh, sir. I realize she doesn't know your name. Um, oh, uh, Garrick. Hi, Mr. Garrick. <laughs> um, um, for Nix, um, ma'am, you wanted to know your room? Yes, please. You're in here, ma'am. Um, and uh, she uh, and you had a single room, correct? Yep. This is your room right here, ma'am. If you require anything, we have room service. Uh, food and drink are brought to the room, as well as anything you would require or desire. Wonderful. Thank you. Except for people. We 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 don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> I had to make that joke. I'm sorry. Um, no she's going to kind of nod, and she's going to kind of go this way. And are you turning in for the night next? Yep. Okay. Um, so we are going to jump back to, let's see, who have I not, where is, uh, Gisa? Still Gisa. in the last car, with the car. Yes. Well, what are you doing up here? We said there's a horse. Right there is a horse. Here. Yes. All right. I'm going to go up to the horse. What are you going to do to the horse? I'm going to speak to it using speech of the woods, which okay. beasts can understand my speech, and I also gain the ability to decipher their noises and emotions. Oh, God, I love this. Okay. So I was wondering, is the food here good? Do you travel this way often? Uh, the horse is going to kind of look at you and be like, oh, you can talk to me. Yes. yes. Finally. Yes. Well, the hay is very good. We we do come here often. The master is lazy. Who is the master? Oh, some blonde woman in the... somewhere. I don't know. These are the only walls I know. <laughs> the blonde woman somewhere. Does she have a name? The blonde woman somewhere. I call her stupid. Ah, stupid. I will remember this. I call her stupid. She calls me Jared. Why does she have you on this rickety contraption if she doesn't ride you? Oh, because she's trying to go home. She's going home because her husband's cheating on her. Oh, <laughs> yes. I've been through this as well. That is... Not good. Nah. Hey, could you get me a sugar cube? Um, I actually have some on my person. Oh my god, I love you. Um, so yes. From uh, my, um, let... one, one second, my friend. 
watch. Um, she's going to pull out this large circular piece of uh, cloth and lay it on the floor and then kind of stick her arm into it and rummage around and then pull out a sugar cube. Um, and then she's going to pull out a second sugar cube and then fold up the cloth and then pick it up and put it in her like pocket and then stand up and I've got two sugar cubes for you, my friend. Um, very happily going to stamp their little hooves and be very excited. Ah, yeah! <laughs> You're the best. Give me an animal handling, by the way, when you're feeding with advantage. Oh, with advantage? Yes. That would be a you're, 17. You're fine. You, you, you know, he doesn't bite you when excitedly eating the sugar cubes. Um, yes. Uh, beast and beast tongue is my, my main language. So my speech is better and you people like you, I just feel like you get me, you know, like you get me on a very personal level. I like you. You can visit me anytime. I will. If I have questions, I will come back and find you and I will see about freeing you from this devoid of passion and life environment. Maybe I can even purchase you from this evil woman who has stupid. She's pretty stupid, but there's a, a little kid, little boy man. He comes and visits me sometimes too. Oh. Seeks me bread. Oh, what a nice boy man! Do you know what time he comes to visit you? I can come and see if he knows the ways of the beast as well. No, I can't tell time. <laughs> this does make sense. <laughs> Hang on, no All watch. Right. Well, what do you call yourself? Me? I'm Seneca. Beautiful name, Seneca. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Could you tell my stupid woman that? She wants yes. to call me Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will correct her mistake. Discreetly, of course. Good. I will see you again soon, my friend. And, and yes, and, and tell her I miss Ramsey. Ramsey's her husband. He was nice to me. Uh, okay, yes. I will say that as well. Goodbye, um, I must friend. bid you adieu. <laughs> okay, that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go over to... <laughs> To, oh god, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> to Derek. Um, the tech conductor is going to return to you, Derek. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. What did you see? Well, there is magic coming from him. Oh. Were yes, you able to get seems... any specifics? Nope. I am just able to tell that he has a magical aura that's coming from his pocket. Ooh, which pocket? Hmm. I'm unsure. I was too far to tell, and there was a table. However, I'm mm. leaning towards the right pocket. Marvelous. That, uh, that might be a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one I might win. <laughs> I wish you luck, and uh, do seek me out later in the observatory. I would love to hear more about Shadow Kai's and their language. I mean, I'd love to tell you. <laughs> oh, 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 toodaloo. Bye. <laughs> okay. He's going to go back to business. a corner, back to his tramp. Business, business, business. Ooh, okay. I'm going to put a pin in you right uh, there, uh... Austin, mm. uh, Garrick, um, mm -hmm. that, that triggers something, um, but, uh, Garrick, are you going to go back to the, uh, bar cart? Not bar cart, gambling car. Which one? Garrick. Garrick, Garrick, pause, because you've activated my hidden trap card, um, Eric, are you heading back to the uh, gambling car?
You can call me Roulet if that would help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh god, okay. <laughs> I'm saying it proper. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. This was my fault for not looking at the cast list before I chose a name. <laughs> Derek, Derek, I'm gonna say it wrong now, just oh, cause. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> I need water. What is happening? Oh, Derek, mm. are you going back to the gambling car? <laughs> what I would like to do is I would like to be a little bit sneaky. I would like to misty step under the table and be hidden. What? <laughs> I mean, everyone's legs were there, so I don't Okay, um... It's easier to pickpocket if no one knows you're there! True. You're gonna have... To... That's not... How tall are you? 5'8". <laughs> this is wild. Um, <laughs> where exactly on the table do you want to land underneath it? I would like... Like, closer to the empty seat, closer to one of the other people, right between this man's legs, like... I I would like to... <laughs> I would like to appear really, like, close to this man's shins. No, wait. Here's... Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to cast uh, Psychic Whispers again. Uh, and I'm going to spend one of my, uh, one of my actual psionic dice this time. And this one's going to only last for two hours, this lucky bitch. And I'm going to go, sir, whatever you do with what happens oh. next, please do not react. Just hint, I'll be very close. Like, it's fi it's fine. It's going to help. I... I... It's going to stop. <laughs> so okay. let me understand something. You have n you are now mentally speaking in the stranger's mind. Yes, again. <laughs> oh my god! I'm going to need. I don't even know what I need. I'm gonna I'm gonna need a charisma. Um and I think it should be a saving throw. Seventeen. Mm. Huh? Seventeen. Well, no no, what was that? What were you trying to say, dear? Oh nothing. I was gonna say if you were looking for a specific thing, um, just to like backseat DM and assist, I would try like persuasion because she's trying to convince someone of something. It was, but that's not because that's the second one that I want her to roll. The right, first okay. one is. I got you. I'm I'm back to being quiet. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're good. Because <laughs> thing is, it's persuasion to not get him to react to her, to to him appearing under the table. Uh, but the first one is the voice in the head <laughs> that hasn't been addressed. Um, what was the number you gave me? 17. Okay. Um, the gentleman is going to smack his cards down. He's going to look around a little bewildered, but he's not going to panic yet. Not going to say anything. He's had a couple drinks already, and he's just going to look at his cards <laughs> and go, God, is that you? <laughs> Darling, no. <laughs> no. Now I want you to roll a persuasion. 16. you want. 16. What's going to happen is I am going to appear at your feet. Please do not react. I'm going to catch this cheater in the act. What? And he's... He, he is now, like, covered his mouth. And we... Um, and he... He's now mentally speaking. Um... Can you hear me, God? Darling, once again, not God. 
Your fellow card player, do you remember me? Oh. Oh. Yes, I'm going to remove from that man whatever it is he's cheating with so that we can get our money back. And what I need you to do is not react when I appear at your feet. Can you do that for me? Baby. All right. Now, in three, two, and at one, I will teleport. And, like, he's under the table, but, like, back up against this dude's shins. <laughs> I need a stealth, please. <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Dirty 20. Okay, you're fine. You're fine. Um. Um... Give me a second. Oh, no wonder he's fucking losing a fucking poker. Um, <laughs> Bad day. Oh, god damn it. Um, he is gonna kind of jump a little in his seat. Like, oh! But he's gonna, like, hit the bottom, like, of the table with his knee. Like, fuck. Because he, he feels you there. It's <laughs> like... And um, the others kind of look at him. You you succeeded yourself. They don't just, notice just you. Just gonna kind of give his calf a little light pat. Good job. <laughs> he is breathing hard. He looks panicked. The lady thinks that it's just because they're losing again. Honestly, the dealer thinks it's a little funny, but like everybody thinks he's just losing. He's oh, like breathing fur. hard, looking at his cards, like Jesus fuck. <laughs> Now, the real magic. I want to pickpocket this man. But first, I would like to, to really study his pockets. See, like, where are they, you know, which one has m what might be a magical item in there. Maybe one is, like, his pants aren't quite tailored, and so the pockets poof open a little bit. You know, those little things. To kind of get, like, the best angle at this. Yes. I'm sorry. The chat has me dying. I understand. Um, give me a second so I can give you that answer. <laughs> Five seconds. I'm just referring to... Okay. Um... So it looks like his act like his actual like pants are the ones that have the pockets, not his overcoat. Um and um there seems to be like coins and like like there seems to be something in both of them. Um you would have to take a gamble. I am See. going to take the advice of our lovely butler. And I'm going to go okay. for the right pocket. Okay. So, uh, roll me a sleight of hand, please. Come on, baby. Dip needs revenge. Mm, not too bad. Aha, uh -huh, 26. Okay. Lovely. I, I was panicking for a minute. Um... <laughs> Same, honestly, because that would be weird. <coughs> uh, now, uh, give me one moment. Uh... God damn it, where's my two-sided die when I need it? Anything divided by two? They're all ah, and evens? I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. It's in the right pocket. Um, as you successfully pick this pocket, um, you pull out um, coins, just spare gold coins. Mm. Um, uh, you gather exactly uh, ten of them, actually. Ooh, they're going in my pocket. 
It just like quickly tucks in a pocket as I then try for the other pocket. All right, then roll me a sleight of hand. Oh, come <laughs> on, baby. But. But. Give me a disadvantage because this is the second time you're touching him. Right. Yeah. Ooh. My darling friend, could you make a distraction up there while I do this? Persuasion. <laughs> the persuasion is a 16. Okay. All right. Um, the gentleman, uh, not very aware of what's happening, not sure how to communicate with you. How do I do that? And he says it out loud, and they kind of look at him. Uh, both of the, the people at the table look at him, and it's like, what do you mean, do what? And, and That'll the, work. the gentleman with the blonde hair is like, how to do what? You know, quit while you're ahead? Because, I mean, so far you owe me money, kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, he is slightly distracted. Would that remove the disadvantage? Yes, it would. Whew. All right. 22. <laughs> okay. Um, you pull out a stone. Rock. Yes. It's like a plain river rock. Um, with, hold on. Let me. We got him, Pringles. <laughs> Maybe it could just be a rock. Um, yeah, it, it's a, a, a stone that seems to have, um, it's like a, a river stone, but it seems to have like a little carved kitty face in it. Hmm. Hey, I almost took that as my magic item. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you now have this rock in your hand. You're under a table. What I do it. I would like to use my last <laughs> my last teleport to teleport back to where I was. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, stealth. darling. Oh, I had to put it in my pocket. Where's stealth my dice? For me, please. Pringles, where's my dice? What'd you do with it? Oh, I put it back. <laughs> I'm sorry I blamed you, but uh, you were the obvious choice. Huh. Okay, that's good. That's good. T Dirty 20. Ooh, don't fall, buddy. Okay, you're all right. Wild um, it on the desk tonight. Um, you have left that gentleman, though, really rather confused. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm going to find the you can't go up there you don't belong on top of my monitor I'm going to find the conductor okay uh pin in you if that's okay yes. um we're going to jump over to Garrick where is Garrick not yes, in his I activated room. your trap card Yes, you did. Uh, this is not the right person. Where ah, is here we go. this guy? <laughs> to the left! Asshole? No, I know where he is. I'm trying to find the uh, token my friend made me. Mm. My friend made me these tokens, and I... budged. Ah. Uh, is it this one? No, it's not that one. God damn it. Hold on. I will be with you momentarily. I have too many people on this train. You know what? It'll be this one until I find a better one. Because I, I don't want to waste time. Um, there we go. Um, you've activated my trap guard. So, um, as you're approaching, uh, a elf, a high elf, uh, stops you. Excuse me. Are you here for first class? I'm gonna kind of look him up and down, size him up. Um, no, I'm, I'm heading to the, 
the back. I'm doing a job. Well, could you please do your work quickly and pray go back to the rabble and tell that little slave girl that I would not like um, her little lackeys disturbing my guests. I mean, I think that's kind of rude to call her a slave girl when you're a butler. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh and what are you? An overgrown lizard? He's gonna kind of um, like roll his shoulders like I mean you're just a pointy ear so I mean my ancestry is draconic so I think that's a bit of a step up right? <laughs> oh, excuse me, but <laughs> high elves are some of the most noble and best breed around. Um, our line is. Butler. <laughs> I tend to first class guests. Yeah, you that can't just means even you're dealing with to other laws. <laughs> Listen no. here, you pointy eared <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I've killed people for less than that. If you don't get the fuck out of my way, I swear to God, I will throw you out this window. Intimidation! Let's go! With advantage. That's a natural 20. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, he kind of looks at you, kind of fixes his, uh, his suit. Not worth getting my clothes dirty. Uh, ignore any of the rooms you can't afford and just go on to your business. He's going to dissipate, actually. He will have Misty stepped and disappeared away. <laughs> Fucking soft paws. <laughs> Alright. I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna make my way. Make my way, Danta. I know she said don't piss him off, but that is not who I am at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, keep going. Uh, these are, of course, more. This is the mithril and uh, uh, God, uh, platinum cars. These are the first class cars. Um, you do not have access to any of these doors. Oh you God, I'm have... stuck. <laughs> I can't get out. Okay, there we go. You. I fixed you. There we go. I was trying to move to the straight line and it put me in a room and then I was stuck. <laughs> it's okay. Um, as you enter this back area, you enter what is just a glass car. This seems to be very greenhouse, very like chillaxing, very like bookish. And it's a semi open car. Uh, if you want an example, like a proper picture of it, I do have it if you would like to see it. Um, <laughs> Yes, I I very much like this module because it's visually very beautiful. Um, let me let me drop it in handouts real quick. Um. Uh, choose my file. Um, but yeah, this is the uh, caboose essentially, or the um. The proper name for this is the observatory, the Mercury Observatory. Um, and I am actually going to drop it in chat because it's easier. And uh, give me a quick second. And here it is. Uh, and that is what you see. Um, on the car. Ooh, so the the la the long car and the last one are kind of like conjoined. 
This is just one long car. It's just and half it of it is open air and half of it is enclosed glass greenhouse. So if I, uh, let me describe it. Uh, it's the highlights of the railway. It's a raised open air oval platform that takes up the entire back end of the carriage and is surrounded by iron railings with spear shaped finales. A large brass telescope is affixed to the platform, providing guests with an opportunity to see the stars or take a look at any towns or sceneries the train is patch passing. There's a number of comfortable deck chairs and small tables scattered about. Drinks can be ordered directly from any of the passing staff and porters that are in this room and through a communication pipe in the wall. This other half of the carriage where you're currently standing in is enclosed and offers excellent visibility as it's like a glass greenhouse with a tri-peaked roof. Um, there are couches and chairs with plump cushions and potted plants, which adds to the greenhouse atmosphere and lends for a sense of privacy, especially during late nights. Cool. Um, well, I'm just going to kind of go from like front to back, just like really looking, because this is the only place in the car I have, like in the train I haven't really looked yet. So just like very intensely searching for this child. Okay. Uh, roll me a perception. Come on, dice. Perception. 22. Okay. Um, at the moment, you see nothing in this car. However, um, over here, it looks like there was somebody who... Um, not over here, I apologize. Over here, it looks like there had recently been somebody there. And as you had entered, they had, whoever was there, you couldn't quite see it at the moment. Um, they had quickly left. They had gone out this way. Um, and they left behind um, a cup of hot water and tea um, and a book. Okay. Called, um, uh, mm -hmm. oh, I was going to ask what the book is. Uh, go ahead and pick it up and give me an investigation if you're picking it up. Sorry. Didn't want to assume. That's a natural 20. Beautiful. Uh, the book oh is... <laughs> the book is the sights and views of the world. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep the book with me and I'm going to walk outside and just be like, Kid, I know you're in here. Do you want your book back? Um, there doesn't seem to be any kids out here. It seems to be just some adults mingling. Um, however, roll me another perception. Uh, 19. Okay. Um, you don't notice anything else out here. Okay. He's starting to get pissed. <laughs> so he's going to like just stamp his foot and just as loudly as he can and just as like intimidatingly as possible. I said, get the fuck out of here right now. Um, as you stamp, uh, your perception that last time was a 20, right? Uh, 19. 19. Okay. Um, give me one more time and with advantage because, you know, you're making a scene. Okay, that time's a 21. Okay, lovely. Um, you um, smell food. Nobody here has any food. Um... Would you like to try to investigate where that smell is coming from? Oh, yeah. Just, like, deep sniffs, like, bloodhound is just, like, sniffing this out. Okay. Go ahead and uh, roll that for me. One second. What do I add to investigation? Oh, plus three. It's the same as my perception. Uh, that's another 21. Okay. Lovely. Um... You feel like it's coming from outside because um, you didn't smell it from inside. 
um it smells almost like um bread that's being like heated up again um but you can't tell if this is from the dining car up ahead so and i'm in the outside portion right now right yes so i smell bread out here yes like somebody's trying to like rehut re like reheat bread in a fire but you see no fire here is there like an upper portion? There are ladders, but not for this train car. Um, I, I'm your passive is high enough for you to have noticed that in between cars there are ladders. Okay, he's gonna very grumpily stomp through here. That damn kid making me climb a freaking ladder. Um, there is no ladder for this. Uh, well, no, I. Uh, Hold on. I need to double check if there's one for this car because it's glass. Hold on. I'm so sorry. Because that's important for whenever we actually get to the murder mystery. Uh... Yes, there's no ladder. This uh, car is all glass. Um, so there is no ladder to this one. However, there is one for the next car that you've noticed. Okay. Getting progressively more angry as I walk this way. Um, feel free to cut to somebody else if you want to do that. Okay. Um, who else? Uh, Etha. What are you doing, dear? Githa. Sorry, forgot I was muted. My bad. Um, okay. I am looking for somebody to tell me how to find my room. Well, you have run into Prim. Prim is happy to escort you. Um, um, she kind of looks up at you. Um, hello. Hi. I paid you for a double. This way. Um, and, uh, she will show you into, uh, hold on, eeny, meeny, meeny, this room. This is your room right here. If you have, if you'd like room service or drinks or anything, we can bring them to your room. Um, let us know if you require anything. And that'll be all. Thank you. <laughs> um, and she's gonna... Walk on away. And are you turning in for the night? Um, that's all Prim needs to know. Okay. <laughs> what do I need to know? <laughs> we'll get to it. You can do someone else. Okay. Um, so we're going to jump over to uh, uh, Derek. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what are you doing with the rock you found? Uh, I'm going to show it to the conductor. Like, well, is this what you saw? Um, he's gonna kind of uh, stare at it, kind of pensive. Ah, my, yes, it is. Mm, yes, that might be. So this was in that gentleman's pocket. Now, I am a betting man. Uh, I believe that this might be some sort of lucky stone, which would make that cheating. Well, do you think or do you know? We can't really take things off of thought. I mean, if you've got time. Wait, I, would I even uh, know that? No. I'm not. Um, hmm. Is there somebody on the train who might be able to appraise magical items? Mm, not that I know of, but one of the towns we might be stopping in tomorrow might be able to. That'd be fantastic. 
Um, I have a question. Are you being sneaky at all with your conversation? Uh, with the conductor? No. No? Okay. Not really. Right. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Uh, so where are you going to go to now? Hmm. I would like to go see the dwarf man. Okay. The gentleman who uh, which... commissioned my services in the first place. Which way are you going, left or right? I think to the right. Okay. Um, as you walk by, uh, Verity is going to stop you. Excuse me. I can't help but to have overheard. Yes. But, but you're looking for someone to appraise a magical item? Why, yes I am. Do you happen to know I'm, someone? I might, but you can't be bothering them this late at night. We have a guest on board. Her name's Di Chen. I've got a feeling she can help you with what you're looking for. But it is almost midnight, and this she true. did turn in early. If you need her... You can find her over in the Sapphire car. Thank you for the tip. Is no that problem. a right or a left from here? That's, that's a right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. She is going to kind of signal to her little tip jar, like, like, hey, come on. Oh, yeah. Five gold into the jar. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, she she's gonna start singing back her set. Um, so where are you heard, heading to, Derek? Uh, I'm going to head towards the Sapphire Car. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, and you're passing the gambling car. Yes, but this time I'm going to just walk by as if I have zero business in here at all. Uh, do you want to roll a perception or no? I would love to. Okay. okay. Just kind yeah. of like a, keeping an ear out, but like not going to make it seem like I'm listening too hard, you know? Yeah. Mmm, not to be. That's only an eight. Yeah, you don't notice anything uh, interesting as you pass by. Mm, marvelous. Okay. So, you're off to the Sapphire car. I'm going to jump back over to uh, Garrick. Uh, Garrick, to the front, my friend, to what the are front. you doing? Um, okay, so I'm going to where the ladder is. Is it on the blue train side? Yes, yes. Okay, um, I'm going to like try to quietly make my way up the ladder to not spook whatever's up there. Okay. Um, so, as you uh, climb up up um it's very obvious uh so i'm not gonna have you roll a perception but um you find that someone appears to have made a small camp on top of this sleeper car um that has a bedroll um and some baggage and a small fire with a pot that has that bread that uh, Soman, the cook, was missing. And the fire's going? Yes. Okay. It's embers, I will say that. Okay. Um... But the bread is still in the pot. Yes. It um roll me an investigation. Okay. Because I imagine you're touching things. Oh yeah. Um nineteen. So you can tell whoever was here was spooked, probably by you. 
<laughs> okay. Um, is like now that I'm up here, like looking, I guess right. Is there like, can you keep going? Is there anywhere to like hide? I mean, it's just open. The it's total roof open. So whoever it is, um, I want you to roll an insight for me. Okay, that's a seventeen. Okay, who you can tell that whoever got spooked probably ran off and is hidden among the crowds in the cars. God damn it. They probably jet they heard the screaming at, from you and they have uh, buggered off to hide um among the others. Dang it. Okay. Um I'm gonna take out some of my rations. It's probably just like dried meat or something, and I'm gonna leave it kind of next to their little area. Um and write a quick little note just if you want your book back, I'm in the Ruby car. Okay. Okay. And so with that, are you heading to bed? Yeah. Okay. So then we are going to, I'm making a note of this. We're going to jump back to Derek. So you're in the dining car. Hmm. Hmm. Where? Not feeling too peckish. I'll continue mm -hmm. on my way. To the sapphire car. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm assuming that's the blue one. Yes, yes, it is. Ah, excuse me. Sorry. Sneak right past you here. Um, now, here's the thing. There are many doors, and you do not know where they are in the Sapphire car. Mm. I would like to... Hmm. That is, that is a good... One second. Um. Excuse me, miss. Are you oh, Prim. Ah. Uh, Yes. I'm looking for a hmm, what was the name again? What was the name? I forgot. Are you, ask, are you asking <laughs> out of character? Yes. God, what <laughs> was the name? D uh hold on five Dar seconds because I need to find it too. Darien Dietrin. 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 I'm looking for a person by the name of Dietrin. Oh no, hold on, I said it wrong. Ignore me. Dreeton. Dreeton La La uh, Almora. Dreeton. Yep. Um uh Prim is going to look at you. Well, she's in the sapphire car, sir, but it is way past visiting hours. Is she expecting you? Um, I wouldn't think so, but uh would you let her know that I'm looking for her as soon as you see her in the morning? I can certainly leave a calling card for you. That'd be fantastic. And I will actually hand her one of my business cards. <laughs> and it's just, oh. a, little, just a little uh business card that says Derek Roulet in like fancy script. It's like a, a, a nice, soft, warmish tone, off-white, gold embossed finder for hire. Okay, sir. Are you... uh? Uh, trying to fill out her request that's on the board? I'm actually filling out another request, but I may be inclined to pick up her request if I knew what it was. All right. I have I not yet know. actually perused the board. Well, if you would like to, it's in the dining car. Thank you very much. Um, last order of business tonight for me... Um, the location of my room? Certainly. Follow me, please. And hold on, where did I put you? I put you in the Ruby car. And you order, You got a single, right? Yes. All right. I'll be right here, sir. My uh, and she signals you to your room. 
And with that, um, the, um, you know, everybody starts getting ready for bed, I imagine. Uh, uh, Nix, what do you do to get ready for bed? Do you just... Oh, oh crap, I forgot to go. I was going to talk to the conductor and teach her some... Um, Shadok. Teach him. Teach him. Next time. You're we good. got four days. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> the man is in a trance in a corner. But Nix, you went to bed rather early. Um, here. Tell me, what did you do in that time? Um, put her stuff in the cast that was provided, and then just kind of went into having her trance. Okay. Um. Then, uh, uh, Ritha. Mm, oh, yes. Yes. Um, what did you do to get ready for bed? Oh, um, so I did my my wind down routine, um, which for Gita is I cast Minor Illusion over and over and over, recreating um, traumatic experiences of her past. So like people screaming, the sound of drum beats, um, the crackling of fire, um, all those illusions around herself. Okay. But she's ready for bed now. She's happy and content. Okay. Cool beans. Um. Oh, God. Uh, Garrick. Yep. <laughs> what do you do to get ready for bed, dear? Um. Well, so. Just kind of like wind down. I'm going to put. Um. Uh, my battle axe, like, leaning up against the door, just in case anybody tries to come in. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of lets, like, I'm aware. Um, and then just go to bed. Okay. Um, and, uh, Eric. <laughs> what do you do to get ready for bed? Well, I'm going to unpin my shoulder cloak and you know hang it on the on the thing. I'm going to um I'm going to take the the little stone and I'm going to put it into a specialty pocket in my boot so that I don't lose what? it. What? Uh and then just unbutton the jacket, take off his boots, put them under the bed. Um, going to put my revolver under the pillow, and, uh, just gonna, like, get into, um, more comfy clothes that I have with me, and then he's going to sit on top of the bed, uh, cross-legged and go into his trance. Okay. Um, so for... Facing the door to be as the most unnerving as possible. So, uh, question for uh, Garrick. Would you say that you're awake by 2 a.m., or are you, like, fast asleep? Um, you said it was about midnight when I was heading to the car, right? Yeah, I'm going to say it's about eh, 12.30 when you finally make it into your room. I have a quick question. What Certainly. time did we get on the train? Uh, about five-ish. Okay. Your seven hours is almost up, Garrick. <laughs> Did it not I forgot end when about... you passed it on the other guy? Nope. I thought... I can I have it up it to three people. Oh. Just, at, just in the darkness. Good night. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say probably by two I am. I'm, I'm probably still up. Because I'm so? kind of like, sort of keeping an eye out. Because doesn't sleep easy, especially in like comfy places. So probably like tossing and turning. Um. So I would like uh the two of you in the ruby car to uh roll me perceptions, please. Ooh, a natural twenty. First one of the mm. evening. So twenty-eight. Beautiful. 
Um, and uh, for you, Austin? Dirty 20. Okay. Um, you guys hear the click clack of heels around 2.30 a.m. So, you know, when the bar is closing, give or take what you remember from the cocktail menu and the signs. Um, you hear the click clack of heels. Do either of you try to poke your head out to see who or who that may be or you know no so i'm slightly pulled out of my trance by the click clack of heels and i am crank like how D there should be carpet to stop that <laughs> Ugh, what a powerful pair of shoes I'll definitely remember that in the morning. He's gonna go back into his trance. Okay. Um, just being suspicious, I'd probably like crack the door open very quietly to see what's like what's happening. Roll me a stealth. Oh. Hold on. What do I add to stealth? Plus two. Okay. Fourteen. Okay, um, so um, as you open the door, you kind of see a Verity going into this room here uh, with a key. It seems that this, this happens to be her room, um, and she steps in and kind of closes the door. Uh, if you look at the other end of the hall, you see that uh, Ravio had... If you roll me a perception while you're sticking your head out there. Thirteen. Okay, you can just tell Ravio is following her. Um, hands in pockets, kind of. Um, he was quiet at first, but then he saw you, and he kind of paused and started grumbling, and he just walked past. Off he went. And that is all you see at around 2.30 in the morning. Hmm. That was weird. All right. <laughs> um, and with that, um, everybody can take a long rest as the train um, shakes and stirs everybody to sleep. Um, it seems that there's peace tonight. Um, as tomorrow the day waits to be rather interesting. And considering the time, I think this is a good stopping point. I yes. think so. Yeah. All right. See you next uh, time, everybody. <laughs> See y'all. Bye.